I think she had written the Maud abortion episode by the time I had met her, and she had uh, another, other strings of other episodes that she had written, along came Bronson's and things and such. And all I had heard that she was a very good writer, you know, and that she was attractive. And the first time I had met her, uh, we were doing the Bobby Sherman show, and uh, Paul and I were meeting with writers to come up with story ideas for the show. And uh, she walked in the door in a pair of hot pants and a, her long hair and uh, went, you're Susan Harris, okay. And uh, we talked about some story ideas. And I think she might have done one for that series. I, that I don't recall. But the next time we all got together was for uh, Loves Me, Loves Me Not. And she uh, uh, did that show with us. And then I think after that, I think if I'm right, Love Me, Love Me, Love Me Not was not a Whit Thomas Harris, I believe. But at some point, we realized she's very good and we can't afford her. So let's make her a partner. And uh, we did. And thus, Whit Thomas Harris was formed. And from there, uh, you know, we went on to do many shows. We all got along. You know, there, it's, there's uh, some sort of magical fate involved here because Paul, Susan, and I are, are very, very close. And I think, you know, uh, it, we were, you know, obviously we were strangers when we all met, but uh, you know, and they ended up marrying each other. So clearly, you know, there were some things here that uh, gelled. Uh, so um, uh, it just, it was just a great, we got each other, we laughed at the same things, we knew how to fight smartly so we never endangered our relationship, or debate smartly so we never had to disagree, and uh, we just all got along. We enjoyed each other's company. We genuinely enjoyed each other's company. So it was a pretty easy hookup for everybody. Certain writers, and Susan is one of them, that uh, um, you can imagine dialogue in so many different ways and when when a very good writer I mean I imagine dialogue constantly as a producer and I have spoon-fed writers dialogue and I have dictated dialogue in a in a, uh, in a rewrite room and I have helped shape dialogue and everything else and you, you, you know you imagine scenes you start to see the flow of it when you spitball a scene with Susan and she goes off takes that blank page and comes back with that dialogue. It's, it's just not written that way. It's not ordinary. It's extraordinary. And it's magical. And she's found the stuff between the cracks. And, and, and uh, she can make you laugh on one page and cry on the next page, and, which again goes back to relating to my father's work, where he would literally make people cry about telling some story about some old Italian woman or, you know, and then the next, tell the funny side of that very same Italian woman that he grew up with living over a bakery with the Irish and the Italians, blah, 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 you know. And that was the same thing here, where Susan could just take the, 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 the audience through so many emotions in, in, in a five-page scene, and, and brilliantly, and, and not do it typically, or not do what you would expect the next line was going to be. And that's what's magical about her writing.